Joining us now uh, live on the line is Alexander Coburn, the editor of CounterPunch.org, live from Eureka, California. Uh, Alexander Coburn, uh, well, the bailout, all its sweetness for congressmen, it all passed, and yet uh, international markets are plunging. Do you think Congress will have to pass another bailout bill, and do you think they'll all acquiesce? I think they'll acquiesce, probably in whatever the Bush administration and Paulson of the Treasury proposes, although there is absolutely enormous popular anger about the bailout across the country, a coalition which goes from right-wing Republicans right through uh, middle and working people. There's, I've never seen in over 20 years such unanimity of loathing for Congress and for the administration. That is a major political fact um, which should be known. Uh, most, <clears throat> most economists not purchased by the administration or patronized by the administration agree that the bailout, said in before the bailout went through the Senate and then back to the House of Representatives that it wouldn't work, that it was stupid, that it, that it wasn't enough, that it wouldn't answer the crisis, it wouldn't solve the problem of indebtedness and over heavy mortgage interest rates for the people who bought houses from these real estate salesmen. So there was initial pessimism, and of course, as you pointed out in the introduction, the markets are reacting very pessimistically. Indeed, the uh, Hong Kong is down 3.4 percent. I noticed India down sharply. Uh, you've said that whilst McCain's running mate Sarah Palin, uh, perhaps reflecting that popular uh, resentment, denounced the corruption of Wall Street in her performance in the vice presidential debate. Meanwhile, Obama full square behind Bush. Why would this be? Obama and McCain both fell into line. I, I have said and written that McCain's last serious chance, I think, aside from the race factor, which nobody can calculate, which a lot of people in America simply won't vote for a black man, uh, his last real chance politically was to come out against the bailout and place himself at the head of a populist coalition answering to the fury which I just alluded to. Now, Palin, of course, is his vice president, and, can, and he voted for the bailout, as did Obama. No one is particularly surprised that Obama did. His advisor is Robert Rubin, the former Secretary of the Treasury under Clinton, and a person who pushed Clinton and urged Clinton into the deregulation which contributed to the present disasters. And Obama is tremendously cautious and has got a large amount of money from Wall Street, as indeed has McCain, whose major advisor on these issues for a long time was Phil Graham, the former Texas from uh, Texas Senator, I think we discussed it last time I was on your show, who was a leading sponsor of deregulation. But McCain, who is an opportunist and doesn't have much economic uh, expertise, should have thrown all these people overboard and simply come out against the bailout and found himself the right economist. And I think he would have had a huge response. But he didn't. He shirked it. He's not really a maverick at all. He's a conventional uh, U.S. Senator who's... Uh, first disaster many years ago was when he was a publicist for the, uh, well, a supporter of the depredations of a scoundrelly banker in Arizona called Keating. So, uh, uh, so uh, uh, McCain came out for it, Obama came out for it. Miss Palin, of course, Mrs. Palin, rather, the governor of Alaska, wasn't, isn't in Congress. And uh, in her debate with Biden, made several slighting references to Wall Street, as you mentioned, unlike Joe Biden. Joe Biden, of course, is um, he comes from the state of Delaware, which is the home to the largest um, independent credit card company in the world and is a, a very close friend of big business. So Palin was the only one, she was tied by the fact that she's number two on the McCain ticket, but I think every instinct in her politically would be to attack the bailout. And uh, so... Um, we have uh, a case of uh, both candidates being supported. Well, they're probably, you know, in effect, are getting money from the bailout itself. We were talking uh, earlier here on uh, this channel about uh, Senator, uh, about Congressman Brad Sherman, who said that congressmen were threatened with martial law if they didn't vote for the bailout. Yeah, that's been widely pointed out. It is true, legally, that the Bush Cheney administration has adjusted the law. They all cut stems from something called the Posse Comitatus Act, which originally forbade the intervention of the U.S. military in any domestic politics. That's been amended to make it a lot easier to declare martial law. Now, whether they actually would have gone so far as to do that, I don't know. 
but certainly it was used as a club to try and, and successfully to try and influence congressmen. There you are, you're a congressman so-and-so, and, -so, and you, you're against the bailout, and Vice President Cheney or President Bush or candidate Obama rings up and says, do you realize if you don't pay this bailout, uh, there will have to be martial law to save the economic situation? Are you going to be the congressman or the congresswoman who stands in the face of this or not? It's a very powerful tool. And just I was Cheney. I'm sure he would have every intention of doing what they said. And just finally, uh, I did notice the Chinese Communist Party uh, issuing a statement welcoming the bailout, despite the prospect of the value of their uh, 1.8 trillion in dollar reserves uh, declining. Um, do you think they? Well, of they... course they'd welcome it because the bailout, remember, has been extended, uh, you know, to the foreign banks, and so the Chinese have this enormous holdings in America. So. Obviously, anything that bails out financial interests such as their own will be of a help to them, so and they so, assume. Of course, it's short-sighted in the long term, but probably sensible in the short term. So we might expect another bailout and uh, the Chinese to back that? Well, um, you know, there's only so much they can do. I mean, there are real fears. We have a piece going up on uh, our Counterpunch website tomorrow, which uh, your re people can look at at counterpunch.org by... Paul Craig Roberts, the former Assistant Secretary of the Treasury under Reagan, also by Mike Whitney, a very astute observer, both really expressing very grave alarm that the whole show is going over the cliff. I think the, the situation is, as you suggest, extremely tense. Alexander Coburn, editor of counterpunch.org. Thank you very much for joining us.